Hey, hey. Hey, Jake. <laughs> Thanks for meeting with me again. Good to see you, man. Good to see you too. Hey, what you drinking? Cold brew. How about yourself? A uh, chai tea latte. Yeah. Perfect. Hey, you remember our talk last week about the flood and fossil remains and all that stuff? Yeah. Well, like, <laughs> kind of obsessed over it. Did you now? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, so I, I kind of tore into every resource I could find from creationist and secular sources. I found dozens, found some crazy interesting stuff. <laughs> Wanna see it? Sounds awesome. Are you going to uh, run it by our favorite science professor? Oh yeah. Hey, how was he when it came to creation evidence? You know when you challenged him? He had an evolutionary answer for everything. It kind of shook me for a while. Yeah. That was until I remembered what I was talking to you about last week. And that is Sola Scriptura. I'm sorry, remind me of that again. Scripture alone. Basically, God's word has checked out so many times and in so many ways and always comes up true. We need to let that be our authority. Oh, no, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so don't put physical evidence that we find about the flood or other topics above what God shows us in authority with his scripture, right? Yeah, otherwise yeah. we could end up endlessly running down rabbit holes, placing whatever we find above scripture. Or if the so-called evidence turns out to not be true, that can really shake our faith. No, yeah, I got you. But there's no way Bradley can answer this, okay? Uh -huh. The evidence is too good. <laughs> so for starters, right? Did you know that dozens and dozens of human footprints have been found alongside dinosaur footprints? Or even in dinosaur layers? Hmm. It's all over the world. Yeah, but it's been a while since I've looked into them. Well, well hey, check this out. So, check out these human prints at the Paluxy River in Texas. For 100 years, they've been digging up dinosaur tracks in the riverbed right next to human footprints. Whoa. Oh, here's the Taylor tracks, where they found 14 human prints right next to dinosaur prints. These are cool. But didn't several creation scientists classify these human prints as just eroded dinosaur prints? Well, yeah, yeah, but, but it sure looks like they have heels and toes in a lot of these. Check out these human prints stepping in dinosaur prints. I mean, look, it looks clearly human. They are very human-like. Yeah, one of them even looks like a human print with toes over the edge of a dinosaur print. Some of them even show dinosaurs stepping in human prints after the human print was made. Or even coming in sideways, see? Wow. Are there others? Let's see. Uh, I know I have them in here somewhere. Yeah, there's the Riles track, the Morris track, and the Willet print, excavated from a limestone ledge near Dinosaur Valley State Park. Yep, there's the very famous Delk print, that shows a human-like footprint intruded by a tridactyl dinosaur print. Pretty interesting stuff here. CT scans show both tracks were made before the mud hardened. Hmm. Makes it really hard to fake. So is it just in Texas where they found these tracks? Oh no, no, not even. Here. They're found in several places. Here. There's a Zapata track in Permian limestone in New Mexico. Dates back to over 250 million years and of course that's using conventional right. dating. But get this. Smithsonian Magazine even said that these tracks were a mystery calling them problematic. Hmm. Not only because they look human, but because they were right next to the tracks that were massive, looked like mammals and birds that supposedly hadn't evolved yet. Get this, evolutionists haven't even tried to debate if the authenticity of these yet, or the human-like appearance of this one. Convincing. What about the footprints supposedly made by our alleged human ancestors? Oh yeah, you're talking about the, uh, the, the Lytoli footprints, supposedly made by Lucy, huh? That, that sounds familiar. Weren't they a long way from her? Yep. Yeah, about a thousand miles away from where Lucy was discovered. But these are obviously human. They didn't even find Lucy's feet with her fossil, but they say that her kind made these prints a thousand miles away. Hmm. Here, check this out. Some of these prints are even 10 inches long. That's the size of a nine and a half shoe. How could a little three and a half foot ape supposed to make those, huh? Yep, sounds like a stretch. These prints don't even look anything like ape prints. Nope. Check this out. Yeah. About, about 20 years ago, they found these human-looking prints in Miocene rocks that evolutionists date to about uh, 5.7 million years. It's on the island of Crete. These prints put humans on the scene millions of years before they even supposedly evolved. The researchers said the tracks were human-like because they lacked claws, were bipedal, plantigrade, pentadactyl, and strongly intexonic. Man, you should took a deep dive into this. <laughs> yeah. It would take me a while to investigate all this stuff. But you know, Bible-believing Christians wouldn't be surprised if these turned out to be true. Because we know that all creatures were formed at God's command just thousands of years ago. Well, yeah, I, I get that. It's just, <laughs> this evidence sounds extra, over-the-top convincing, you know? Hmm. Well, well, getting back to human and dinosaur prints, check this out, okay? Just a year ago, a team documented some human-looking tracks that intersect right through dinosaur tracks. It's at the Calorco site in Bolivia. 
This place has over 5,000 prints from almost 300 dinosaur species. I heard about those. There's this huge rock wall that's 80 meters high, 1,200 meters long, and tilted up 73 degrees. Yep, see, got it right here. <laughs> yeah, all these prints show hundreds of dinosaur species scampering from high ground during the final stages of the flood, even with some humans doing the same. Crazy, right? Yeah, call me a skeptic, but I think you ought to check this out even more before you talk to Professor Bradley. Did you find anything about fossilized human remains, like skeletons buried in the layers with dinosaurs? Yeah, well, well, I remember what you talked about with the worldwide disastrous nature of the flood and how it'd be very unlikely we find fossilized humans. I know there was 150 days before the flood had finally reached its peak, so people would have to go up to high ground, you know, but, but even then, the remaining people that did reach the high ground would have been picked off by the receding flood waters. So huh. I know it's unlikely, but I think I have some possibilities. Like what? <laughs> well, yeah, here. In the 1970s, a copper mining company in Utah discovered two fossilized human skeletons that were buried deeply in layers that are supposedly more than 65 million years old. The first skeletons found here were under 15 feet of material, including five feet of solid rock. They were still joined together and were stained green with copper carbonate. Eight more skeletons were found here in the 90s, including women and a baby. And these were buried even deeper in the hillside. See, there's no way this could be an ancient burial site because the bones here were buried 50 feet deep in undisturbed, hard layers of limestone. They also don't think the bones were recently buried because they were disassembled, highly mineralized, tested to be very old by radiocarbon dating, and had no detectable collagen. Yes, but that's just one spot with human remains, Jake. Professor Bradley would never let you get away with that. Hang on. All right, so in 1805, they found the Guadalupe skeleton. They pulled it out along with a two-ton limestone block and put it on display in the British Museum of Natural History for 50 years. In 1985, geologist John McKay surveyed the fossil site and confirmed it came from Miocene deposits dating between 5 and 23 million years on the normal dating scale. That's way before humans were ever supposed to be on the scene. Yep. And the fact that it's encased in limestone sure makes it seem possible that people existed before the flood. Oh yeah. No, yeah. I went to geologist John McKay's talk, and he told us about this time where he took a trip to where the fossils were actually found. Check it out. Are there any human fossils? Well, I was actually engaged in searching for a human fossil because I'd published an article by a Christian author about a fossil that had been put in the basement of the British Museum once evolution became popular. Then I got into trouble. I was the editor of the Creation magazine at the time. The head of the British Museum said, how dare you? Right? And I said, well, you publish, you give me an article and if it's correct, I'll publish it. So I published their version. I noticed one thing in common in the two articles, neither the British Museum nor the original creation author had been to where this human fossil came from. Oh man. So John Mackay being yeah. John Mackay packed his bags, uh, went to the jungles and actually had a good look on this place. Number one, it had never been mapped geologically. Wow. The French used to own it, so they mapped it to here, mapped it from there, but the place where the fossil came from was not on any geological map. That was very interesting. Uh, secondly, I mapped it. All right. Thirdly, I reported back to the British Museum and I said, what you've said is wrong. Here's the maps. Give the guy full credit. He said, oh, oh, you're right, right? So if that was correct, the map wise, that made this fossil what the creationist author said, supposedly millions of years old. But anyway, I said, now that I'm here, can I see your human fossil? Sure. So down we went to the basement. Here's this petrified woman in limestone, definitely, she was stoned, totally, right? Laid out there and, uh, and, and really in limestone. And I said to Dr. Chris Stringer, head of human fossils at the Natural History Museum, a very prestigious place, I said, how many human fossils do you know of? He said, oh, about 30,000. I thought, what? I said, why don't we read about them? He said, well, now there's about two to 3,000 in the official lists. There's another 10,000 in the unofficial lists. And there's another 10 to 20,000 after that in the if you need to know list. Right? Mm. And I thought, isn't that interesting? That's a good point. So there are really human fossils. Uh, I've seen one of them personally, and it's, it's 
as human as you and me, right? But put that into the position, there weren't a huge number of people at Noah's day anyway, right? And even if they did get fossilised, it would have been in pretty much the scenario that Dan has mentioned, catastrophic, destructive. You know, as I like to tell them, they were judged by water. Now they're judged by fire. They're called petroleum. He was a really nice guy. Okay, that's a lot to think about. But you know that even some creation ministries and scientists disagree about a lot of these findings, much less secular scientists. So when are you going to run it by Professor Bradley? Next week. Wow. You give me the whole class time. That's good, Jake. So what if Professor Bradley debunks everything you have to say? I mean, there's no way he can. The evidence is overwhelming. But if he does, do you just give up on your faith? No, <laughs> but I don't know. It's rock solid, you know, pun intended. Jake, I want to make sure you're not hanging all your faith on whether this evidence checks out or not. I learned that anchoring my faith in the truth of Scripture is a better way. That's good advice. What about you? What would you say? Jake, even if all these things you've shown me turn out not to be true, it still wouldn't shake my faith. Because I know God's Word is true. But it wouldn't surprise me if this evidence and others like it turned out to be true. Because it's what we expect to see from a biblical worldwide flood. Right? I mean, from a big picture perspective, there's just way too much of this evidence for it all to be intelligible or, or wrong. There seems to be a pattern here of finding footprints and remains in places we're not supposed to find them. But do you think it's wrong to look into this extra evidence? I don't think it's wrong, Jake. Just remember, the world is never going to be convinced by your evidence alone that God created the world and that the Bible is true. It takes an act of God to bring people to Christ. The evidence just gets some obvious roadblocks out of the way. Also, remember that no matter what science seems to say for or against your faith, start with the word and use that to determine whether what the world is showing you is true. That's great advice. Yeah, well, hey man, thanks for your time. Seriously, yeah, I appreciate it, so. Hey, before you head out, let's pray for the heart of Professor Bradley. Yeah, yeah. sounds good.